What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be running through the performance impacts of having HPET enabled and disabled on an AMD Ryzen system. While I do have an Intel system available to me, the graphics card is not exactly the same, neither is the CPU power. And it took a good day and a half to finish benchmarking all of these games with accurate results. So if you'd like to see that, make sure to check the description down below. In the future, there may be another video on this topic. So before we get started, timestamps are in the description down below if you're curious on skipping to specific games and seeing the overall conclusion. But before we get there, for those who don't understand what HPET is, basically HPET is a high precision event timer. It's been built into Windows, developed in part by Intel, formerly referred to as the multimedia timer. Why is that? Well, simply, the HPET can produce periodic interrupts at a much higher resolution than the RTC or Real-Time Communications API and is often used to synchronize multimedia streams, providing smooth playback and reducing the need to use other timestamp calculations. Basically, it's supposed to give you better performance in multimedia streams, such as video, audio, etc. However, if you simply give HPET a Google, you'll get a whole bunch of videos and questions of whether you should have it on or off for games and the rest, so instead of just asking a whole bunch of questions, let's get into some solid answers. I've benchmarked a whole bunch of games off of Steam, Epic Games, and of course the Xbox or Windows App Store to give you an idea of how UWP apps perform as there seemed to be a slight trend there. Though of course, that trend turned out to be inconclusive in my final results. What exactly is UWP? Well, it's the Universal Windows Platform app and it's programmed slightly differently to normal apps or games. Anyways, what exactly were my results? Before we get into game benchmarks, let's see the results of some synthetic latency benchmarks. When test timer for me went from 14.3 MHz on to 10 MHz off meaning that the query performance frequency was faster with it on. As far as I've heard, this is what it should be when HPET is enabled. I'm not going to lie to you, I couldn't find good information anywhere on the internet for what exactly the difference is here. To me, there's not too much of a difference. I'm more just including this for those who are curious about this result as this is a common program that people talk about. The more interesting result came from Latency Mon. Basically, this piece of software is to test to see if your computer can handle real-time audio and other tasks. This yielded a much more interesting result for me. With HPET on, there was a ton of latency and the message at the top said, conclusion, your system seems to be having difficulty handling real-time audio and other tasks. However, as soon as I disabled HPET, it said, conclusion, your system appears to be suitable for handling real-time audio and other tasks without dropouts, and the latency was quartered for the current measured interrupt to process latency. It was almost halved for the highest measured interrupt to process latency, and there was a huge tenfold decrease in the latency for the highest reported ISR routine execution time and highest reported DPC routine execution time. Of course, while all of these synthetic numbers are basically meaningless to the most of us, there was a huge latency decrease, which is a good result by disabling HPET for me at least on my computer. Enough with synthetic benchmarks, let's rather just skip straight into actual game performance as that's what we're all here for. I'm not even going to bother with GPU synthetic benchmarks such as Unity in Heaven or 3D Mark. Let's just get right into real game performance impact. Well, in total, I benchmarked 13 games and they all presented very similar results, except for a couple of outliers. CSGO jumped from 235 average to 255 average, resulting in an 8.4% performance increase from disabling HPET. Apex Legends jumped from 76 to 85, resulting in an 11% performance improvement. Cyberpunk 2077 from 35 to 42, resulting in a 28% performance improvement. And this was the biggest result that I had throughout this whole test. Ghost Runner running in DirectX 12 mode jumped from 82 FPS all the way up to 90, 9.49%. Dirt 5 from 31.8 to 32 FPS, which is basically no different. Armor 3, using one of the community-made benchmarks that's rather CPU intensive, jumped from 28.8 to 29.3 FPS, which is only about a 1.7% improvement, which could just be completely fluke. Then for some more recent titles, Call of Duty Modern Warfare had both 68 FPS for enabled and disabled. The same with Cold War, it jumped from 75 to 72. There was a slight performance decrease, but I'm sure with a couple more tests that would have evened out to be right about the same with HPET on and off. GTA 5 jumped from 109 to 124 frames, 
which is a 13% improvement. Then we got into some UWP games or for the Xbox App Store in Windows. Wolfenstein Youngblood had two FPS benchmarks built into it, so I thought I'd test it with both of them. The first went from 96 FPS down to 75, and the second went from 110 down to 83. Both of these benchmarks resulted in a 22 and 25% FPS loss, respectively, which is a really negative impact. However, this was the most negative impact and also the only one that went above 4% in lost frames. The only other game that lost FPS was Black Ops Cold War at 3.5%. Then Rage 2 jumped from 62.2 down to 62. That could just be complete fluke, there was no difference between HPET on and off. Forza Motorsport 7 went from 84 to 88 FPS, only a 4% increase. And then finally, I benchmarked Outer Worlds on the Xbox App Store, which went from 58 to 66 FPS, a total of 13% more FPS. So what exactly is the conclusion of this video then? Well, of course, it's completely up to you depending on what games you play. The majority of games will have no impact at all or will have a positive impact from turning this off. Some games, of course, will lose FPS, such as Wolfenstein Youngblood. I have no idea why that was an outlier. The only thing that I can think of is that it could have something to do with the Vulcan engine. But I'm quite sure a couple of other games on here are also running using Vulcan, though I'm not entirely sure. If it comes down to it and there's enough of a request to do this again, benchmarking Vulcan and non-Vulcan games with HPET, then make sure to check the description down below if I release a future video on that. For the most part, if you're running an AMD processor with lots of cores, such as me on my Ryzen 3900X, it's probably a good idea for you to disable HPET, as you'll get a performance boost in most games. Again, the only one that seemed to struggle was Wolfenstein Youngblood. I have no idea why it had such a big impact there, but everywhere else it seemed to be pretty good. So if you'd like to have yourself an extra 5 to 30% FPS, then disabling HPET is probably the way to go. While of course this video does have some conclusive results, this is of course specific to my setup, a 3900X and a 1080 Ti. You of course will need to do benchmarks of your own for the games that are most important to you and the ones that you'll be playing the most. How exactly do you disable or enable HPET in Windows? Well, in the description down below, you'll find two commands. BCD edit, delete value, use platform clock, and BCD edit, set, use platform clock, true. The first command disables HPET and the second one re-enables it if you'd like to turn it back on in the future. While we're going to be running these commands from an administrative command prompt window, you also need to make sure to disable something in the device manager and you'll need to check your BIOS to see if you have an HPET option. Now, from what I've seen, most ASUS motherboards don't have an HPET option. Like mine, the X570F, it doesn't have an HPET toggle. But if yours does, make sure to turn it on or off there as well, depending on what settings you have in Windows. If it's disabled in your BIOS and it's enabled in Windows, it can result in a much bigger negative impact in games, as Windows is going to try and emulate the feature without it being enabled by your actual PC hardware. So with that aside, let's go ahead and disable HPET. Simply copy the first command from the description down below, BCD edit, delete value, use platform clock, hit start, type in CMD, and then run it as administrator. Inside of him, simply hit Control V to paste in the command and hit enter to disable it. Press start and type in device. We'll be opening up device manager as well. Inside of him, simply make sure to expand the system devices section, scroll down a little bit until you find the high precision event timer. Make sure to right click this and then click it disable as such. Once you've done this, HPET is disabled not only here, but also inside of this option screen over here. All you have to do next is make sure to disable it in your BIOS as well for the most performance impact. Note that you will need to restart your PC after changing this here for the full impact. If for some reason you don't see the HPET, at the very top click view and then make sure to tick show hidden devices. Now you should be able to see it. If not, then your version of Windows might not support this feature or your hardware has got it disabled at some level that Windows detects and therefore hides this option. If you'd like to re-enable it, copy the second command from the description down below, BCD edit, set use platform clock true, paste it into the administrative command prompt simply by opening it once again and then hit enter. After doing this, refer back to device manager, find HPET, right click and then click enable device. Once again, locate it in your BIOS after turning off your computer and make sure to enable it there as well. I, however, am going to disable it here in my device manager and I'll be running the disable command as I gained quite a bit of FPS by disabling this feature, so I'm going to leave it off on my current setup. As for FPS for me, most of the games that I play on a daily basis will get quite a bit of FPS from disabling this option. But anyways, that's about it for this video. 
Hopefully you found something useful in it. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.